what are some of the ways that you have been using to make sure that you give uh, these people the capacity you know in order for them to see for themselves uh, what is good for them like you know as you said instead of giving somebody fish you show him how to fish so what have been some of those mechanisms do they include sports and other activities as you said um Education is key in this. Um, feature enhanced is doing a lot of capacity building, uh, both at community and targeting the youths. And uh, most of our activities now are changing to doing the trainings to what we call continuity of activities. So instead of gender training, we now call it gender continuity because we make sure that there are institutions in place that can continue those processes. Some of the other things that we do is youth bantaba. Youth bantaba we do where we bring the youth together to discuss um, thematic issues affecting them. Another thing that we do is advocacy sports. You know, we, we use sports to reach the, the youth. And uh, in, in, in this, we also attach, you know, advocacy, sharing information, kind of attach, attach a youth bantaba within the activity. And uh, the objective also is to demystify football and sports, not seeing it as only a boys dominated activity, but also female can come and do football and do other sports. So we, 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 we do that also. And as I said, we encourage them to come up with institutions to continue the activity on, the, on their own. And we support those uh, institutions in so doing. Uh, having been in youth service, um, youth activities, or working with the youths for some time now, um, you must have been able to at least have an experience as to what those that you have been working with need in their overall development process. Um, what have you been able to gather from your work with youths? And where do you think uh, Gambian youths are and what do they require in order to move uh, faster in the, in the development process? Gambian youths need more support. They need education. They need education. They need exposure. Um, most of the things that come in the action plans that came from the activities is, you know, they're looking for employment, you know, looking for more um, education, looking for improving their income base, you know. So there are so many things that they are asking for. And I think um, one thing we do is collaborating with the regional youth and sports um, offices to engage the youths more. I think one major thing is engaging them, um, giving them the support, giving them education, creating you know the right environment for them, just as what the present government is saying, going back to the land, but give them the requisite materials, you know, for them to be able to, to do that. I'm sure, as of now, what I'm seeing, there is dramatic changes in the world view, you know, of the youths. And I think with the requisite support, I'm sure they will go back to the land, you know, they will, they will try to be self-reliant, you know, and, uh, and, and get the development that they need for their communities. All right, Mr. Kamara, I think we'll have to leave it there. As you said, the requisite materials will take you to where we want them to be. Uh, thank you very much. That's all we have for you. On thank Spot you, too. Now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's shift our attention to sports. Well, these days, a lot of people are talking about Real Madrid and Barcelona. Guess what? Do you know that on a daily basis, approximately 3,000 football fans visit the Santiago Bernabeu? Ibrahim Balde gives us his impression of Madrid and its gigantic stadium. Fernando Santos hits the road early in the morning to go to work. During the early morning rush hour, he's focusing his attention on the heavy traffic, wondering whether he would reach his destination on time. It can sometimes be frustrating, irritating, and tiring for this Portuguese. One needs to wake up early in the morning every day if you are looking forward to working in Madrid. For Fernando, the task is ever daunting. Yes, it's difficult. In the morning, principally, when we come to work, trust me, it's really complicated. Uh, Madrid has six hours to get out and get in, in the city. They go to six different points where live the, I don't know, half of the population of the big city. 
the community of Madrid. And for the morning to come to work is really complicated because you can take two hours to come inside Madrid. It's really difficult. This was a journey of discovery. We are heading towards Santiago Bernabeu, the headquarters of Real Madrid Football Club. The short walk to this magnificent stadium with Fernando Santos, where football pilgrims from far and near congregate. What is the capacity of this wonderful edifice where historic games have been staged? The stadium capacity to 85,000 persons has uh, contrasted as more than 14 years ago. Uh, inside you have everything, restaurants, bars, uh, disco, and it is uh, really amazing. This is really in the center of Madrid, in the center of the city, in the most important avenue of Madrid, in La Castellana, and it's one of the symbols of the capital for Madrid. Uh, you can see the stadium any hour in the day, with game or without game, because you can pay a uh, guide visit. And it's really amazing. It's a structure really amazing, as you can see it. The relationship between these two rival football teams, Real Madrid and Barcelona in Spain, is a cause of concern for many football commentators. Fernando supports neither team, but he knows there is always a great debate when talking about these two great teams. Yes, it's a fight between the two cities and the two clubs. But it's really amazing what Real Madrid can see in Barcelona because uh, when it's a, a classic game between Barcelona and Real Madrid, can persons from South America, United States, everything, that pay lots of money. And this is the black market to come here to see a game. It's really amazing. On our way home, Fernando has no time to talk. The traffic is heavy again. The scenes from Santiago Bernabeu, the art that are on main streets and the people in the traffic continue to reverberate in our minds. Ibrahim Abalde, GRTS. That's Weekend Spectrum this week. Thanks for watching. Until I come your way again, I am the Kumadeemba. Spectrum on GRTS. From hard news. Uh, I want to direct this question to the FAO. For human interest, Weekend Spectrum is a program that spices up your weekend with news breaking events in and outside the Gambia. Meet the people who inspire others to think and change the world. These culminated experiences were able to show anybody in New York that I'm somebody who's tough and I'm able to survive and carry out the work that I'm given. So uh, it was a process, uh, a tough one, but uh, all in all, as I said, with, with the grace of Allah and with the support of parents and with the confidence of coming from a small country like Gambia and having a lot